everybody, Decaf here from WiseFlightHeadquarters.com and today I'm going to do a quick scratch model tutorial showing you how to create propellers. Now these propellers aren't going to be super fancy but they are going to serve our purposes and have a nice twist to them and be having some complicated curves. So we can make really cool propellers, anything from a C-130J propeller all the way down to a submarine propeller using this technique. So let's get into it. What we're going to use is a Bezier circle. So we're going to add a curve which is called a Bezier circle. And we're going to just rotate this around the y axis a little bit to get it to where we want it to go. And we're going to want this zero, these guys one, and these guys zero. Just so we have uh, this corner of our mesh, uh, our circle anyway, uh, right at the origin. Now, the Bezier circle is a little bit different from what we normally think of as circles or what, it, what is this. Um, basically, a Bezier curve is curves that are defined by tangent points, which we have at each of these corners. And the way the curve is controlled is by these little modifiers so that we can stretch out and really do some really funky things with. So you can make really fun shapes with this. Um, but one thing I want to point out is that there's only 12 vertices in between each of these points. So there's 48 vertices in total uh, in this circle. So there's a bit of detail that we can have in here, uh, but if we uh, subdivide this or something like that, now that's doubled the number of vertices. So that's a lot more than we really need. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to shrink these guys down a little bit uh, and bring them in towards the origin so we can get uh, a propeller base going on there. And then we're going to take this guy, bring it up so we can have some twist, bring these guys out, fiddle around with this guy there, that looks a little better, maybe move that guy out a little bit, move these guys around, just enough so we have a little sharper point out here and we don't have a super uh, thick propeller relative to our uh, length. So that looks pretty good there. Just as a quick little example, we can shrink these guys down some more. And what we're going to do now is convert this Bezier curve and circle into a mesh. So we're going to go out into object mode, convert object type, or you can just do Alt C. And now we want to make sure this is a mesh. Nope, it's not a mesh yet, because I forgot to click on convert to mesh. There we go. Now we can see that we have a wonderful system of vertices. It looks quite nice. And what we're going to do now is make sure that this is centered around the origin. So we need to snap our cursor there. Cursor to selection, center cursor. Now our object center is right there. And we're going to go ahead and look at this from the top or something like that where we are looking at it basically head on. And we're going to duplicate this and rotate this guy around. There we go, now we have everything all around. We're gonna select them all and join them together. So now it's all one big happy family. Now we have a couple options here. Let's go into uh, the texture view mode just to highlight this. And it has to do with the normals, how we are looking at this propeller. Uh, we can either uh, do this one of two ways. First, we can do the low polygon method where we just select everything, go to our script window. Uh, we go to our Y is face mode script, and we click a double sided, and that basically allows us to see it from both sides. That's probably the best way to do it, or the quick and dirty way to do it is if we undo that, is to duplicate it, hit W, flip normals. Now that just completely doubled the vertice count in this propeller. So if we're doing low polygon, not what we want to do. So I like uh, to use the double sided, uh, it works great for what we need to do. Now uh, we're ready to add in the twist. So what I'm going to do is add in a cylinder. Uh, there we go. Cylinder. There we go. Uh, right around uh, this axis that we want to rotate this. So if I blow this up a little bit, uh, let's see, the Z direction, shrink it down so it's not really overpowering. We can go into the solid mode to uh, see this a little better. And what I'm going to do right here just to save time is copy this name. Uh, that allows me to just copy paste it right into the add modifier section here 
uh, for our propellers. So we select our propeller blades, add modifier, simple deform, and we want to make sure this is on twist, and we're going to paste in the name there and click relative. Now if we look at this and de-click relative, you notice, okay, what's going on here? That looks weird. Then we had relative. That's what we want. That looks really good. Uh, and we can fiddle around with this a little bit. We can fiddle around with factor. Uh, how much is this? The more we add to it, almost two, we get a pinwheel kind of thing. Or you know, even like a uh, submarine blade or a ship blade or something like that. Or if we back off a bit and go to 0.5 or 0.4, something like that would look a little bit more like a regular old ship propeller. But you know, ship propellers aren't really that curved and things, so let's uh, scale this in the Z direction, flatten it out a little bit, and there we go. There is a lovely propeller setup. So uh, we just have to hit apply, and we are all set now. We can go ahead and smooth this out, make it look nice and pretty, and we have one excellent propeller blade all set and ready to go. So if you have any questions about this, go ahead and throw me a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Uh, I hope that you find this useful and you can apply it in a lot of different situations.